Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. God bless everyone that's listening to this testimony. My name is Pastor Juan Garcia, also an evangelist out here in Franklin, Tennessee. I've had some people ask me for my uh, testimony in English and uh, would like to uh, go ahead and give my testimony for the first time in English. If you do want a copy in Spanish, I do have a CD in Spanish that was uh, preached out in Chattanooga, Tennessee in the church of uh, Pastor Raymond Sloan. I'd like to go straight into my testimony, but before that I'd like to take a verse out of the Bible. There's a lot of things in this testimony that I won't say just to protect my loved ones and some things just may be a little strong. But my desire is to testify what God has done in my life. You see, if more of us would stand up and uh, testify the miracles and the healing and the deliverance that God has done in our lives, many people would be touched. I've always said every time that if God could save me, God can save anybody. In the book of Mark chapter 5 and verse 19, the Bible talks about a man that was demonized with many spirits and Jesus delivered him. And when Jesus delivered the man, the man had said, the man that was possessed or demonized begged Jesus to go with him. But in verse 19, Jesus did not let him, but he said to him, go home to your family and tell how much the Lord has done for you and how he has had great mercy on you. I'm here to tell you, my brothers, that that same mercy that this great evangelist in the Bible, this man that found no way out, everybody left him. He was all alone. Nobody was able to help him. This man found Jesus. I can relate to this story for the things that I have passed in my walk. When I was two years old, my parents divorced and uh, then I saw myself with a new father role model. You know, when marriages are, they go through divorce, Sometimes we don't think about our children. The majority of the marriages that are divorced, the children's are the ones that suffer. The children go through abuse. The children are the ones that grow up dysfunctional. dysfunctional. And I just like to say that Everything that my parents did, I do forgive them. Now in my walk with the Lord, now that the Lord has opened my eyes to be able to see that my parents really did not know what they were doing. You know, the Bible tells us if we can't forgive, you know, Jesus can't forgive us. Sometimes that's the hardest thing to do is that we can't forgive the people that have hurt us, the people that have abused us. Mentally, physically, sexually. And I know what I'm talking about. I know the things that I went through were, were because of jealousy. I know that every time my father saw me, he saw my biological father inside of me. Every time he saw me, he saw my father. And I believe that he was tormented with not only jealousy, but with Hate, hate and anger and rage and bitterness. I would 
he 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 would he would he would hit me with anything that he would see around. I mean, he'd just I do something wrong and he would pick up branches or or anything, a, a trimming from a car or an in, 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 uh, in, in extension cord or I remember one occasion he hit me with the chain and 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 this really damaged me as a child. In one occasion, I remember that me and my sister were fighting in the dinner table and all of a sudden my father stood up and grabbed me and dragged me into the garage and uh, I just like to say that it's not very easy to give my testimony, especially after many years. But these are for the ones that have asked for it. I remember him dragging me to that garage. And he sat me there in a in a steel chair and he, he tied my, my body to that chair with duct tape and then duct taping my, my, my mouth shut so, so I wouldn't scream. And, and he grabbed a blanket and threw it over my body and turned off the lights and left me in the middle of the garage for hours it seemed. I remember screaming. I still remember the screams in my head at times. I remember me screaming, not knowing what, what, what I did so bad to deserve that. This, this caused fear to enter inside of me. I was fooled with fear. There was times where, where, where I was embarrassed. He would grab the barbecue grill and put it in front of the, the, the glass a sliding door in, 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 in the living room where it was facing the front of the house where the street was and the sidewalk. And I remember him taking on all my clothes off except leaving me with my briefs. And he told me to kneel down on that barbecue grill and put bricks on my head where I had to hold the bricks on top of my head. And people would pass by and my friends would look at me and they would laugh and I was embarrassed. And I just remember not understanding, not understanding what I did so wrong to deserve these things. There was times that at night where, where, I, where I would wet my bed like many children do for whatever reason, health issues or so. They would get me up at the midnight hours and drag me into the tub. They would fill the tub with, with cold, cold, cold water and, and strip me naked and throw me into the, in, in, into the bathtub. There's times that they would get ice and throw it in there and throw my naked body in there and they would push me down, filling me with fear, thinking that they were going to drown me, that, that I was not loved enough. Well, what, why are they doing this? What did I do so wrong? They called it discipline. But I did not know the definition of discipline. All I knew was fear and hurt and, and pain. I, I can sit here and talk about a lot of things, but there's one occasion where I, I could never forget. I did something wrong in school and I don't remember what it was, but when I got home, my father was waiting there for me. And I remember very clear every time that my father was angry, I was able to see it in his face. I was able to see it in the movements of his body and the way he walked. I right away knew that something was wrong and that I was going to get in trouble once again. I remember him grabbing me once again and taking me to that garage and putting that chair once again in the middle of the garage and standing me on top of that chair, grabbing a rope, throwing it over the two by four in the garage and putting that rope around my neck while he tied my hands behind my back. He grabbed that orange construction extension cord once again and standing on that chair, all I knew is that I did something wrong in school. He whipped my body. I, I never forget the pain. I never forget the pain at that, 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 that time when I was, the fear that I was going through. The, the fear of falling off the chair while, while I was being whipped. 
when my father was done. When he had gotten tired, he had given the whip to my mother, and my mother continued to whip my body. At this time, uh, my body was, was, was trembling. My body was tired. I was no longer able to hold my body up on that chair, and I remember falling off that chair, and my mother had said that when I fell off the chair, my face was turning purple. I do remember the fear of dying. I do remember what what who's going to save me from this situation. My mother tried holding my body up while she screamed the name of my father to come and help her. Help, help, help. I can't hold him any longer. My, my father wasn't able to hear when he was inside the house and here I was feeling all this fear of of dying while all of a sudden the rope auto, automatically snapped and it breaks now I believe in miracles of God I believe that we have angels with us I believe when when the word of God says in Ephesians chapter 1 and, and verse 4 and 11 that God has chosen us before the foundations of the earth to be predestined according to his will, his purpose, and his plan. I believe I had a destiny. And I do believe that an angel of the Lord helped me in that situation. I love my parents very much. I want to let everybody know that I love them. I love them very much with all my heart. I know that the mistakes, I know at times I was filled with anger and rage and I was filled with bitterness. I even had the spirit of murder. After all these years, God has opened up my mind and, 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 and has given me the knowledge to understand how these things happen in our homes why our parents do what they do when we don't have god in our life we we, we 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 don't have the holy spirit to guide us to teach us and we do things because the enemy is constantly there for well, the bible says that satan has come to steal kill and destroy he wanted to steal the purpose in my life he wanted to steal my ministry my calling and he wanted to kill me. For the enemy doesn't waste any time. He kills us in the flesh. And he destroys us in hell for eternity. Oh, but I thank God. I think that there is a God that the day that I was created, God had a purpose in my life. And here I stand now. I love my parents. And I want to make that very clear. Yes, it took me a long time. It took me a long time to forgive my parents for what they did. Because I didn't have Christ in my heart. I did have all anger growing up. As a teenager, I grew up with so much anger and hate. I left my house. I waited for the moment, the opportunity for me to leave the house. I already had my bags packed. And I said, that when, when I turn 18 years old, I'm gone. And, and, and I had left the house at, at 16 and 17. And, and I tried getting out of the house. But the fear of my parents, the fear of this and that. But I carried as a teenager this, this bitterness and this rage inside of me. And, 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 and even though I was a teenager, I still had that little small child inside of me that was crying. I self-medicated myself with, with drugs and alcohol and every drug that you can think of from, from cocaine to crack to, to marijuana to, to acid and speed and, and mushrooms. And I would drink and drink just trying to soothe that pain, that hurt inside of me, that rage to calm down, that rage, that spirit of rage that was inside of me. But what feared me, what I feared the most was the spirit of murder because there was something inside of me that, that, that wanted to kill my father. 
I became a very, very good wrestler. I came in second place in the state of California. I beat all my opponents because I had my mind thinking that is my father. And I would take it out on people, not, not only in sports, but I would take it out on the streets and I, I would go out and hang around with the gangs out in the San Fernando Valley in Orange County and hanging around with the most ugly people, not caring if I died or lived, living on the streets, living in my truck, didn't care where I was at. I would go to parties and there at the parties we would drink and, 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 and do so much drugs that I thank God I had never overdosed. But I would wake up in the morning with bodies on the floor, in the carpets, on the couch, in the kitchen, people that I did not even know, saying to myself, how did I get here? Who are these people? And I would walk over these bodies to leave this house looking for happiness, looking for women to make me happy, looking for the bottle to make me happy, looking for the drugs to make me happy, looking for that love that I felt that I did not have in my home. I was in and out of jail all my life as, as a teenager, in and out and in and out. There's times that I would do things on purpose to put myself in jail because I was so scared that I was gonna harm my father. See, there's, there's things inside of me that, that there's things inside of every person that's been abused that, that nobody knows. Maybe mom doesn't know, maybe dad doesn't know. There's things that we keep inside of us and as long as we keep these things inside of us, we can't, God can't help us. We need to trust somebody. Go to your pastor. Go somewhere where somewhere spiritual. This is a spiritual war that we're going through. Oh, I tried therapy and I tried the, the institutions and counseling and, and my parents and my uncle, my families. And, and I tried so many of these things, but nothing was able to help me. I got so lost, so lost in the world that there was, there was days I did not even remember. I remember leaving this house after being drugged and, and, and drinking so much and uh, getting into my truck and driving off. And I thought to myself that day, I'm going to go visit my parents. I hadn't visited them for so long. And I remember going on the freeway and I was on the 118 in California. When all of a sudden I look up at the signs and I knew that I, it was about 20 minutes, 20 minutes for me to get to Simi Valley, California. And all of a sudden I fell asleep because 20 minutes later I woke up. I woke up in fear and, and I grabbed my truck and I threw it to the side and I looked up in the sign and the sign said Tapo Canyon. That was the off ramp to get to my house. And I said to myself, wait a minute. I, it, it, I, this should have took me 20 minutes to get here. I got out of my truck. All of a sudden I was sober. All of a sudden I, my mind was clear and, and, I, and, I, and, and, and I looked around with fear. I was surprised. I said, what happened here? I fell asleep. There is no way that I drove 20 minutes. You see, I believe that I did fall asleep at the steering wheel. But once again, I believe in angelical beings. I believe the angel of the Lord drove that truck. And that's why I'm here today. Oh, I believe I have, I, I, I know right now, at, at this time, I've got five angels with me, five angels. They're always with me. When I'm doing ministry, when, when, when I'm doing deliverance, when I'm praying for the sick, now that God has chosen me, I've got five angels always with me. See, I know God is with us. And if he is with us, who can be against us? But when you've got the whole package, hallelujah, the enemy can't do nothing to us. I was just so lost, looking for love and so I went to go to with my father and I had met my wife, my girlfriend, and we were dating and we were breaking up and dating and breaking up. And, and you know, the time came where she left me because of drugs and I was just so messed up and I, I felt she was 
the woman of my life. Yeah, I, I was running one of my father's restaurants out there in Anaheim, California, and I could not function because I was drinking and doing drugs, and I got lost even more out in the city of Orange County, California, hanging around with the wrong crowd once again, thinking I almost had something good. I almost had this woman that probably could have changed my, my life. I got involved with some ugly things, ugly people, and I started seeing different people and was manipulated in different ways and on the streets, nearly being stabbed, hanging around with people that were so high on cocaine that these were, we, we, we thought these were our friends, but they are not our friends. Because from one moment to another, I, I, had, I, had, I had so-called a friend running toward me with a butcher knife. I remember him coming down the street so fast that all I was able to do was to just put my hands up and look down thinking this is it, it's done, he's going to stab me, he's going to kill me. And I remember him, I remember feeling the knife hitting my jacket, piercing my jacket. And when I opened my eyes and looked up, that so-called friend looked at me. His face was white. He, he was not able to, to, to function or to even speak. When I looked at my jacket, my jacket was pierced with the knife. And he saw something, turned around and ran and left. You see, my brothers, I'm telling you, we do have angels that camp around us. We, I should have been dead that day. I could sit here and, 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 and extend my testimony and tell you how many times I, 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 I've came so close to die. But because of time, I was just so messed up and it came to the point where I just wanted to leave that, that vadio we called it. They didn't want to hang around that vadio anymore and I tried to find a way of leaving there. I had a relationship with another woman and she would not leave me. Uh, remember that there was no way of me leaving that house. She didn't want me to leave. I remember she would not let me out of the house. Every time I did, she would threaten to kill me. And I remember one time that this woman started taking acid and she had taken a little bit too much mixed with cocaine and all of a sudden every time she saw me she said that I was a giant spider and she would go around the house chasing me with a butcher knife I remember one time that she was running after me and I ran into the bathroom closed the door and she pierced that door with a knife I remember waking up at the midnight hours to broken bottles to my neck and knives to my neck telling me, you better not leave, you better not leave. I was stuck, I was, I was, I was scared, I was... Oh, these are things, brother, that it's not very easy to talk about. But I found a way to leave. I found a a way to try to clean myself some up somehow, some way, and went back to my girlfriend, the one that left me because I was on drugs. Went back to the San Fernando Valley to go look for her. Was able to escape. A lot of the people that I hanged around with that so-called were my friends and all these gang members, a lot of them are dead. found my way and I left to go back to that woman that I loved so much thinking this is the woman that's going to change my life I know it is I know it is but what I didn't know was that some one has had been doing witchcraft to me 
Long story short, I married that woman, which is my wife now after 25 years. Oh, my wife can tell you some stories. She can tell you many stories. I could only give you my testimony of my life without Christ. Maybe one day I'll give my testimony, my life with Christ. See, the devil never give up. See, the devil will keep on trying to attack you, to steal and kill and destroy you. He wants to send you. He wants to make you a trophy in hell. That's what he wants. If you have a calling upon your life, he wants to make a trophy of you in his trophy room. I rebuke Satan and all his helpers in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. See, when I got together with my wife and long story short, we ended up getting married in Las Vegas and we ended up moving from the state of California to the state of Washington and we stayed there at an aunt's house. And after two weeks, I started feeling funny. After two weeks, I started seeing things. I was not able to sleep and something was happening to me supernaturally and I did not know what, what it was. I couldn't make out what was going on and I would start hitting my wife and I would start wanting to kill my wife after being married. This was not right. My, at this time, my, my wife had called my mother in California and said, Johnny is acting weird. He's different. He's not himself. He, he has seen things. He looks at me, but he looks right through me. There's this weird thing about him. And I remember my, my mom telling him, come down, come back to California. Bring my son back. We need to know what's going on. And once again, long story short, uh, we got to the state of California and my mom knew something was going on with me. It wasn't just drugs. It wasn't just drugs anymore. It wasn't just the alcohol anymore. This was something spiritual, something that we don't believe until it happens to us. It was witchcraft. My mother took me to these witch doctors to see what was wrong with me. I would fall into trances and and things, I would see things around me and things that were not there and spirits that were not there. I would see them around the house. And so my mom knew that she had to take me to somebody. And then back then and in the religion of the Catholic religion, there, there is a lot of uh, witch doctors, uh, uh, priests that do exorcisms and all these type of things. My mom took me to these witch doctors and she took me to the first one. And when I went there to the first one, the, the first one looked at me and looked into my eyes. And remember the Bible says that the, the eyes are the windows of our soul. And, and so he, he, he looked into my eyes and, and he told my mother, listen, honey, I can't help your son. I can't help him because what he has inside of him is too strong for me to deal with. But I know somebody that you can take him with and I'm pretty sure that he will help your son. You see, the thing is, is that the demons that were inside of me were greater than the demons that this witch doctor had inside of him and he was not able to help me. You see, the only one that can deliver is Jesus. He's the only one. Witch doctors can do miracles, but they're false miracles. They're miracles that do not connect with the word of God. So we go to this other place and remember my mom going uh, to get the money that she needed. And, and, and I remember seeing a hundred dollar bills in her hand and went to this man. And he also looked into my eyes and this witch doctor said, hmm, sit down. He looked into my eyes and says, honey, I can help your son. It's going to take some time and it's going to take some money. See, that's, that's how... These things work. It's all a business. It's all about money. See, it's about it's about the enemy just robbing, stealing everything that we have, and and there's nothing done because I, there there were sessions that I that I had to go through. 
But let me just tell you just a little things about some of the things that I went through. I mean, the Bible is full of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, of telling us about witchcraft, that, that these things are not of God. I mean, the book of Acts chapter 19 and 19 tells us all these things that have to do with witchcraft. Grab them, burn them, get rid of them, for they're not of God. For Samuel, Galatians, 2 Chronicles, 2 Kings, Deuteronomy, Leviticus, Exodus, a lot of things, a lot of uh, 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 books in the Bible talks about witchcraft. And these, these people were doing witchcraft to destroy me. These people that I thought were my friends or these people that that all of a sudden because of jealousy once again because of anger or bitterness or envy or say whatever it was they did witchcraft to me the witch doctor started doing all his witchery and all these things and herbs and 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 and, 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 and fire and and just doing all kinds of things and, and 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 I remember one occasion they put me in a black in a white robe and we stood in this room and in this in this room uh, uh, he started to say some words that I did not understand and and all of a sudden there was a wind that wh that world uh, just whipped around the room and I remember my gown just just moving in in the wind I said where is this wind coming from and and all of a sudden I opened my eyes and this witch doctor looked me in the eyes and when I saw him his face turned white his, he had goosebumps like like a chicken. I mean, he he was in fear of whatever he had saw inside of me. They cleaned me with eggs and and all these uh, flowers and branches, and they would open the egg and throw it into a big champagne glass filled with uh, uh, holy water, and and that 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 the egg yolk would turn black, and and there would be spider webs that would crawl up the the champagne glass, and all these things I was able to see as a teenager. These they did all types of cleansing, trying to cast out what was inside of me but let me tell you something it's very dangerous that you allow somebody to lay hands on you that does not serve christ don't just let anybody lay hands on you because that person can make you worse than what you already are and i believe that my parents and even myself as a teenager opened myself even more to demonic demons spirits to enter inside of me I, I, I remember at times in my house they had to lock the house they put me in in this secret uh, they had my own room there and I was not able to leave my house they said he is no longer allowed to leave He's got to be in by 10 o'clock. And they treated me like a child there. And, it, and all these things that I saw and I experienced, they, 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 they were not caused by drugs and alcohol anymore because my parents had been taking care of me. So they knew that I wasn't doing drugs. They knew that I wasn't drinking. This was all spiritual from here on. I mean, there was be, in my rooms, they had, they, they, they had um, a crosses made out of, uh, leaves of palm trees and they had garlics hanging around and they had all these figures and and saints and I remember uh, a certain saint uh, uh, a picture frame of S S uh, Saint Ignacio his name was this saint was supposedly there to help people that were possessed with demons or had been bewitched with witchcraft and voodoo and santeria I remember even at times at night, my bed would actually shake. Something would shake my bed. I would scream up, scream, calling for my mom, saying that my bed, something like what you would see out of the movie of The Exorcist. And they would say, this is all in your mind. It's because the movie you watched or so, but it wasn't in my mind. I was wide awake and something would shake my bed. Something at the window would start tapping. Something would start tapping at my window and there was nothing there. All these things happened to me at the midnight hours. I would wake up screaming, yelling, mom, mom, I can't breathe. Mom, I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I've got thorns. I feel like I've got thorns in my throat. 
mom, please. I remember my mom and my dad rushing me to the hospital. And there, the doctor started to examine me. And, 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 and they started looking at me. They say, he's got nothing. And I would scream. I'd say, mom, please help me. I can't breathe. They said that my face would turn blue because I couldn't breathe. And I, they say, explain to me, what do you feel? What's down your throat? We've already looked down your throat. There's nothing down your throat, the doctor would say. And I would say, I feel like there's thorns in there. And, and the thorns are getting thicker and thicker and I can't, I can't breathe, I can't breathe. Please help me. And my parents prayed the way they know how to pray. And at that moment, that feeling of the thorns went away. There was another occasion where I would just get up at the midnight hours and I would sleepwalk. You see, my mom was always aware, was always, she couldn't even get her rest herself because she would. Uh, she knew that I would get up and just do the most funniest things. I would walk around the house and, and start making holes into the, into the sheetrock of the walls with the supernatural power that I had inside of me. And one day, getting up, sleepwalking, I walked to the front door, went down the steps of the front and the front of the house. My mom followed me. And here I am walking to the middle of the street in front of my house when all all of a sudden my mother grabbed me by my shirt and yanked me back at that moment when she yanked me back a car passed by Satan was trying to kill me these people that were doing witchcraft were trying to destroy me and another occasion I remember being in my garage and and here in this garage I would that same garage that I went through torment and that same garage where I had been abused different ways. And I started walking circles around and around and around, just walking circles in the garage. And I would be talking to myself. It's like a lunatic, like a maniac, just walking around. And my mom would open the door and said, son, what are you doing? It's late. Come inside the house. What are you doing? And I'd be walking in circles. And I would say, mom, cannot you hear? Can you hear? Can you hear? Hear what, son? Can you hear the voices? Can you hear the witches that are screaming in my head? Hear them. Listen to them. They're so loud. Mom, please, mom, listen. Can't you hear? Like a maniac. And my mom would weep and say, son, there's nothing there. There's nothing in your head. You're okay. Listen to me. Come back inside that we may pray for you once again. They would spend the midnight hours praying for me in the rosary, doing the rosaries all night and, and doing all kinds of prayers and, and all the oils and the roots and, and that, that the witch doctors would give them. They would make uh, uh, teas made out of root that tastes like dirt. Uh, they would grab uh, the, these flowers and, 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 and these roots and and, 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 and all these branches that, and they would throw them in the bathtub and, and fill the water with warm water and, and they said that if they I would bathe in, 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 in these roots and these flowers that they would calm the demons down they had certain type of sprays even a spray they would spray around the house that sur supposedly these, this, the spray was supposed to cast out every demon out of the house they would anoint they would put perfumes special types of perfumes there was little bottles on my nightstand of, of oils and, and, and herbs and, 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 and all kinds of perfumes that they would put on my body and, and just to smell the incense. They would walk around the house with incense, burning incense all the way around the house, trying to say these prayers, following these prayers on a piece of paper. This is the only way that my family was able to help me. And I thank God for them. I would walk around the house just seeing things. Going crazy saying, please don't open the door. There's somebody coming in a white gown. And she, and it would, that, that spirit being, which we know that it is a demon. It's not a person. It's a demon that transforms itself like however it wants to. The Bible says that Satan transforms himself like an angel of light. And I saw this woman pass by in a white gown and to the front door and start knocking the door. I said, Mom, don't answer the door. Don't answer the door for they're coming to destroy me. And my mom would say, don't answer. Nobody answer that door. There was nobody behind that door. I remember on my mom's birthday, 
My uncles and my aunts, my family, everybody was there and I sat in the kitchen in the chair and all of a sudden I started to manifest once again. People said I looked like Satan in the flesh because I used to have my long hair and, 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 and there was times where I would not even shave and, and you could imagine being possessed with demons or demonized with demons. And at that moment, I remember one of my uncles telling my, telling my mother, listen, Lupi, listen, your son is manifesting again. And I sat in that chair alone in the kitchen while my family was in the living room. And from the living room, they were able to see me where I would laugh. <laughs> in a demonic voice, I would be laughing at my parents, laughing at my family. And here my mom would say, here we go again on my birthday. Sleepless nights. I could not sleep with my, my wife at all. I had to sleep in a, in a separate room because I would kill my wife. I would try to kill my wife, choke my wife, do anything to do to kill her. I remember my family coming, my uncles, my brother-in-law, my sister, my stepdad, my, my mom, they all came into that into the kitchen and, and they started grabbing my uncles, grabbed me by my shoulders to keep me down on the chair because I was manifesting, I was, I was laughing, I was, I was making fun of them. I was speaking things that were not normal. I had my mom throwing, throwing holy water on me. My father trying to pray, everybody trying to keep me down. I remember saying, do you guys think that you guys can hold me down? And I would laugh at a demonic voice. I said, do you want to see me get up? And with that power of all those spirits that was inside of me, this false power, I stood up from the chair and I reached to grab my stepfather's by the throat and people tried to hold me down and, and they threw holy waters and they prayed and, and here I struggled and struggled until I was calm. There was times where I would walk in where my mom was trying to rest or trying to sleep. And on one occasion, I walked into her room while she was laying down in bed and I jumped on top of my mother and I started to choke my mother. I started to strangle my own mother by with my bare hands. And I remember her screaming, saying, son, son, let go of me, let go of me. It's me, it's your mother, it's your mother. Let go of me. And my brother-in-law came in there and yanked me off my mother. And I would begin to weep and I'd say, Mom, I don't know what's happening. What's happening with me? What's going on with me? But I'm sorry, Mom. I, I did not want to kill you. It's just that I saw something else inside of you. And that's who I was choking. Oh, I'm telling, I want to tell you something to the church. We are ignorant. Satan has so much experience. He's been on earth for millions and millions of years. And if we think that he is ignorant, we better think twice. Stay close to God. Be careful what you allow in your house. Be careful. The things that you're listening to, the things that you're watching. Be careful the things of the enemy. For, he's, for their traps. He's not resting. Satan is not playing Satan. We should not be playing Christians I would see spirits I would see animals and one occasion I would get up and go to work I had to start going to work there was I had to start functioning somehow I would go to work and their people would tell me listen Johnny go ahead on put on my gold necklace put on my gold watch put on my put on my gold bracelet and and I would be wearing everybody's they would say that the gold would would calm the demons down when I would get up in the morning and go out, when my manager would pick me up to go to work, I would see a black dog, like a giant dog, like a Doberman, a giant one at the front of my house. I would get into the car, drive 20, we would drive 20 minutes on the freeway to be able to get off 
from Simi Valley all the way to DeSoto. We get off DeSoto to get into the work, and in front of the warehouse, that same dog was there looking and staring at me. I would see owls, I would see different animal, black cats, and and, and, and and we think that all this is a myth. We think, well, uh, that, that's all a myth. That's all Halloween stuff. I'm telling you, I saw different types of animals. And all these things were real. They were real. The witch doctors did the most they can. They did all kinds of cleansings, and one day... After six months being a vegetable. After six months being a vegetable, I remember that witch doctor saying, looking me in the eyes and saying, You are healed, so stop it. You see what that witch doctor was doing was grabbing every spirit, every demon inside of me, and pushing it back down into its rest area so it would not manifest. What he was doing was not delivering me, but tying all the spirits inside of me because when I continued my life, when my I was able to function and, and be with my wife and try to live a normal life, these spirits were resting inside of me and continued to have a normal life with my wife and my son at that time. And, But I still suffered. I still suffered by doing drugs and smoking pot and alcoholism and still was hurt on, in, on the inside of me, still going through all this confusion in my mind and still going through the rage and the bitterness of what happened to me as a child and then all these other spirits that I allowed to open myself when I started falling into addiction and and, 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 and all these and, and alcoholism and living on the streets and, and all these things that I did on the streets opened myself up more for demon possession we ended up going to the state of Oregon and, and the state of Oregon is where God said it's enough I was tired of my life I tried committing suicide three times in one occasion I remember I was so tired. It was just me, my wife, and my son, Johnny Jr., at the age of two or three years old, in the middle of the living room, filled with anxiety and fear and stress and depression. I grabbed a bottle of tequila, went into the bathroom, got myself a prescription uh, 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 capsules, and, and went into the living room, wrote a letter to my wife and said, Honey, I cannot handle this anymore. All the money that we get, all the help that we get from welfare, I used to grab it and convert it into drugs and alcohol. All that money, use it for my son. I'm only affecting, I'm only doing the worst for you. And so I, forgive me for what I'm about to do, but I love you and I love my son. I grabbed that letter and I put it on my chest. I grabbed that prescription bottle. I took all the pills and I drank the whole bottle of tequila. Oh, let me tell you, when you've got all kinds of demons inside of you and you drink a bottle of tequila, you don't feel it. You don't feel it. But I woke up that morning. I did not have a hangover. I did not have a stomach ache. And I got up and I cried unto God and I said, God, why am I not dead? I can't even kill myself right. I can't even kill myself. Why do you have me like this? I don't want to suffer anymore. If you can't take my pain away, then why can't I take my pain away? I have that right. Oh, I'm telling you, brother, you don't have the right to take your life away. If you commit suicide, you go straight to hell because you don't have a right to take life away. Only God does. He's the only one that can take life away from us. I ran into the kitchen, I went to go get a knife, went back into the living room, got on my knees and says, God, I know, I know that I don't want to exist anymore. And I put that knife up to my neck. And at that moment, I closed my eyes and all of a sudden my, my son came out of the bedroom and, he, and, he, and I opened my eyes and he looked at me and he looked at me with the knife close to my throat. And I threw that knife because I was not able to do it in front of my son. I believe God used my son to save my soul 
Oh, gloria, Señor Jesús. Gloria, gloria, Jesús. Gloria, gloria. Gloria a tu nombre, Señor. Another time, I remember that uh, I grabbed my knife again and tried to slit my, my, my wrist. And once again, my son, a little older, comes out and sees me with the knife out in the backyard and says, no, Dad, don't do it. Don't do it. And he took the knife away from me and the police cars gathered around and they grabbed me and they took me and put me in the police car and took me all the way downtown and and there at downtown they put me into a mental institute and threw me put me in a straight jacket and threw me into this room and in that room I did not know what to do. I believe that God put me in that room for a reason. I believe God at that time was coming to rescue me. I remember being in that in that corner. I remember screaming. Nobody was able to he hear me in that padded room. In that straight jacket up against the corner, I weeped and I weeped and I weeped and I cried and I cried and I said, what's going on? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? What's happening to me? I felt like I was going crazy. And I felt for the first time that God had spoken to me. I can't explain exactly how it is. It was in my mind. It was it was very clear. And, and God says, listen to me. You don't have anybody. You don't have your wife. You don't have your kids. You don't have your parents. You don't have your friends. You don't have anybody around you. Do I got your attention? And I believe God was telling me, I'm, I'm, I'm choosing you. You know, the Bible says, come to me, all you that are worrying and burdened, and I shall give you rest. I believe God was telling me, even though I did not know the scripture, he was telling me, come to me, come to me. You're tired of your life. Come to me and I will give you rest. I will give you that rest that you're looking for. I will, I, I will make that child inside of you that's crying. I will comfort that child that's inside of you. I'm the only one that can do it. Long story short, oh, there's so many things that I could say. I just can't remember them all. <laughs> but the most beautiful thing was is that I had a man, a next door neighbor, Juan Rodriguez. I'll never forget you, my brother, if you're out there. He took the time to preach the word to me, even though I was rebellious. He would come to my house and I would drink in front of him so he would leave, and but he would not budge. He would continue to preach the word and he would say, well, listen, I know somebody that could help you. I know somebody that can take your to take take this pain away. I started listening to him. In some way, I started listening to him because I, I had felt that in the mental institution that there was somebody that could help me, that God was able to help me. I said, is this the man that can help me? He says, listen, I know a pastor that will counsel you guys. Long story short, that the pastor there from Salem, Oregon, he came in, 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 into in, in, into our home, and and, and my wife, we, we, are, we were ready to be divorced. It was it. It was over. My wife was going to go back to Mexico, and never come back. And he prayed for us, and he says, Johnny, you've tried everything, man. You've tried every drug in the book. You tried alcohol. You tried every everything. You've tried it all. Why don't you try Jesus? He says, listen, if Jesus fails you, I'll never bother you again. I said, that's a deal. This is one way to get rid of him. If Jesus can't help me, then you'll never bother me again. Long story short, I started going to the church there. Never forget that little church. There in Salem, Oregon on State and 17, a little small Pentecostal church there. A little humble, powerful I'd walk into that little church, Tabernacle de Salem, with Pastor Jerry Miranda. 
God bless you, Brother Jerry Miranda, if you're out there and you're listening. I'd walk into the services and I'd feel something that I'd never felt before. I'd have to sit in the back pew because the presence of God was too strong. I said, there's something up there where that preacher is preaching behind that pulpit. There's something there where everybody used to go up in front of the altar and when they would kneel, they'd start speaking another language that I did not understand and they would weep tears. And inside of me, something wanted to cry, but I would not allow... I would not allow a tear to come out because the men don't cry. What a lie from Satan. I'm the biggest weeper now there is. Oh, I mean, it came to that point where the presence was too strong. My wife had already been touched by the Holy Ghost. A half hour in the middle of the altar, my wife would speak in tongues for a full half hour. She would speak and weep and they would say, that's the presence of God upon your wife. That's the presence of God upon your wife. Come to the altar and I would sit there with anger and rage and bitterness inside of me. And I would tell God inside my heart and in my mind, I would say, God, what does my wife have that I don't have? And I felt that small voice come to me again and tell me, she's given me her heart. What about you? Are you going to give me your heart? And something made me stand up and walk up to that altar. I started walking to the altar. I did not know, but I felt that like, there was a presence. I, I, I believe it was them angels. Those angels that have saved my life so many times pushed me to that altar. I remember my body trembling and and, 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 and and I could not I could not speak and I felt the fear of the demons inside of me every time I got closer to that the brothers would look at me and would, would, would point at me and say oh my god look there goes Johnny he's going to the altar he's going to the altar and I felt something put me down on my knees and for the first time I, 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 I had tears in my eyes and all of a sudden all of a sudden, half of my body was paralyzed. One side of my face went paralyzed. My left arm twisted behind my back. My left leg was as stiff as a log. My rib cage, it, it, it began to open. Something inside of me started pushing on my rib cage. Oh, but praise God. Oh, but praise God. Something was happening to me. Half of my body was paralyzed. At that moment, the voice of God. At that moment, the voice of God spoke to me for a third time. For a third time. And in my mind, I, can, I was so clear, I can't explain how it was, but in my mind, God said, Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. He says, Do you know why half of your body is paralyzed? And in the way I was able to answer, I answered him with my mind because... I was screaming out the name of Jesus in a demonic voice. I would be saying, Jesus, Jesus. My throat would get would would would, would be numb, would be. My, I could not control what came out of my mouth. I was not able to control my mind. And and, and God spoke to me. Do you know why half of your body is paralyzed? And I said in my mind the way I could, I said, why? Why is my body paralyzed? And God says, because half of you wants to serve the world. And the other half wants rest, wants to serve me. And today you have to make a choice. You serve me or you serve the world. And let me tell you something, brother, sister, my dear friend that's listening. When you've got demons that are wanting to rip you apart. When you've got demons inside of me, you feel all that hate, that darkness, the loneliness. You're going to choose Jesus. And I remember screaming out to Jesus, 
screaming out the name in a demonic voice, Jesus! And at that moment, my body be began to shake. My body began to jolt. I hit the floor and on the floor, my body started trembling and jolting. And all of a sudden I felt something, something come out of my middle of my chest and, and something to come out of my mouth. And, and all, I believe these were the spirits. I don't know how many spirits were inside of me, but they were coming out, they were coming out. And I remember being free in Jesus' mighty name. Free for the first time, I weeped. I weeped like a little child. And that was the greatest day of my life. 1995 going into 1996, New Year's. At 1235, I was baptized in the precious name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all my sins. Oh, it was, it was the most beautiful thing. Me and my wife being baptized on New Year's Day. That's our spiritual birth. Didn't receive the Holy Ghost right away, but one year later, I remember, never forget, receiving the Holy Spirit for the, full time, for the first time. I remember being in my bed and very, very clear. I'd put on the radio full blast and I would practice what other people did and, and I would practice the scriptures and I would kneel in my bedroom and I would let my tongue go and all of a sudden I would feel the presence of God come upon me. The presence of God in that room, the glory of God will fall in that place. I felt a fire in between my lungs and I felt the fire around my ears and around my head and, and all of a sudden I would let my tongue go and then something backed it up which was the Holy Spirit and started speaking like a machine gun and there was a great anointing, there was a comfort. I felt something awesome. And I went outside, opened the door, run down the kitchen, told my wife, honey, I received the Holy Ghost. I know what it feels like. And like a little child, when he has his new toy, I went running, I went running back into the room to kneel down and get back into his presence. It's the most beautiful thing in the world. And now to finish off, I just want to say this. There's so much that I can say in my testimony. But I think I've said enough to someone maybe out there that even if you're baptized in Jesus' name, even if you're serving God, you still don't need free, you, you still don't feel free. You need to be delivered. You need deliverance. You see, if God can use me, he can use you. And if the enemy is attacking you, it's because he knows that you've got a calling on your life. Let God use you. Let God come to him. Like the scripture says. Come to him. He will give you rest. You know, pastoring the church out here in Franklin, Tennessee for eight years and doing the ministry of healing and deliverance. God has given me gifts out of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, the nine gifts, and I'm functioning at least in five and six now, and, and I lay hands upon the sick, being an instrument in God's hand. It's the most beautiful feeling to help people, help people. I understand people. I know what it is to try to commit suicide. I know what it is to be abused in every way, physically, mentally, sexually, in every way. I know what it is to suffer. I know what witchcraft is. I know what the enemy can do, and now I understand why God chose me. And now I help people. People that need deliverance. People that are possessed, obsessed, uh, uh, demonized. People that need deliverance. This is real, church. This is real. Matthew chapter 12, verses 43 and to 55 tells us that it is real. That a demon can be inside of you. We can be afflicted with demons inside of us. And that spirit believes that it's, 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 it's his house. Even if the spirit is cast out, my brother, my friend, even that spirit is cast out. The, the Bible says that the spirit says, I shall return to my house. Demons have faith. They believe that that it's house, and it won't give up. It won't give up until they can get back inside. And some of us need to be free. Now I go around the states and 
I pray on people and love on them and show them that God still does miracles. You see, the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. You shall cast out demons. You shall lay hands upon the sick and the sick shall recover. I am a witness of that. If I have touched in your heart, if I have touched your heart in this message, you, your household, your family, if I've touched you, I'm here to help you. This is my job. This is what I have chose to do is to serve God all the days of my life. To preach this gospel. I can help you in deliverance and healing, but the greatest miracle in the world is salvation. That you enter into the kingdom of heaven. For Jesus said in John 3, 5, Surely, surely, I say to you, if you are not born of water and spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You need to be baptized in Jesus' name. And you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost to be, en to be able to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Acts 4, 12 says that there is no other name under heaven given unto men in which we can be saved. Only the name of Jesus. And he is the one that delivered me. He is the one that embraced that child in me that was crying for so many years. If you need deliverance in your life, if you have sickness on your body that is not God's will, I'd like for you to contact me here at 615-656-3600. Zero five six one five six five six three six zero five. And remember that no matter how bad your situation is, the answer is in Jesus. May God richly bless you. And remember that Jesus Christ loves you.